Um, we, we got everyone's presentation in and we even still have six minutes for some discussion. There's already been some uh, discussion in the chat. I would like to encourage all the presenters to note in the chat the best way to follow up with you. I know it's possible to post questions in, in here in the chat, also in, uh, in the WOVA platform, but maybe you'd prefer to receive questions in email or follow-ups. I would encourage all the authors to put the best way to follow up with them um, in the chat. Um, let's start with a question um, for um, Shinyi Jo. Um, Alex Christensen had asked, did unintentional shares uh, tend to get deleted once users realize their mistake? And if so, wouldn't this make it difficult to find any leftover data? Um, I think Alex have a great point. Uh, it's true that unintentional fake news spreaders may delete their corresponding posts, um, but it depends on like whether they have known what they spread is fake. For example, if I didn't check the news recently or if my friends didn't tell me that gossip might not be true. So it's still highly possible that I still believe that false story. And based on the uh, the data statistics of uh, two data sets, MM COVID and recovery, uh, it seems users are not realizing their perception timely because they're still a significantly like uh, if I remember correctly, uh, near 50% of fake news spreaders uh, are labeled as unintentional uh, using uh, neither purely label or uh, semi-automated annotation methods. Um, but yeah, anyway, Alex has a great point because uh, it reminds me to think about uh, sometimes if uh, we are not, when annotating the data, if we are not very sure if this user is unintentional or not, this delete behavior regarding false news can help us to, 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 to label accurately because that's a sign of unintentional fake news spreaders. Awesome, thank you so much. There's thank already you. been a, a nice conversation in the chat about Aga Ali Rasa's uh, wonderful presentation. Um, there's a, uh, been some comments about this, the ability to scale up, the fact that the system um, handles a, over 11 local languages. Um, Agali Rasa, would you like to um, speak a little bit to the issues of scale um, yeah. in this type of system, scaling the content moderation and, and things like that? Thanks, thanks, Jana. So yeah, those were all great questions about the content moderation. Uh, right now, our model, just for those who have not had a chance to look at the chat, our model is that we have a community-supported expert moderation where we ask every user after listening to each post to tag the post as being reliable or not and polite or not. And the politeness part, actually, we explicitly give them examples of hate speech and um, harassment and then other things, abusive speech and things like that. The, the problem with this model is that once a user reports it, it, it pops up in the moderator's um, uh, uh, screen and, and they're able to moderate it early on. The problem with that model is that because it relies on expert teams, so it's not very scalable. So there was a suggestion about using speech recognition to transcribe the data. We are dealing with the one of the most difficult types of speech recognition problems here, which is a local language speech recognition. Even for popular languages like Hindi and Urdu, the conversational speech recognition of, over telephone channel is has a word error rate of around best word rate of around 35%. So really, really hard problem to crack. And we're dealing with languages for which we do not have ASR capabilities. So one direction, the last point that I have, one direction that we are pursuing right now is to do keyword spotting. So those we, we do have some language agnostic keyword spotting methods to do a pre-filtration of all audios to red flag anything which is obviously abusive or obviously contains things which needs to be removed. Um. Did you say that the speech transcription for popular languages like Hindi and Urdu, the error rate is 35%? Yep. So the accuracy would be one minus that. So yeah, or 100 minus that if you're looking at percentage. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. Um, uh, uh, Kirill, um, I see a, a, a comment here in the chat about um, separating out tweets and replies posted by bots. You said that you're interested in looking into that. Would you like to comment a bit about that? Yeah, indeed, we are interested. In, we are currently also looking at how can one separate what replies for actual user replies. 
Honestly, quite hard problem to tackle. I cannot yet comment on the results, but we are working on that, and I would be glad to present it as soon as we do have it. And yes, we are looking into it. Awesome. Well, that brings us to uh, just one minute left. Um, so I think maybe I will use that minute to uh, again request that all the authors put into the chat the best way to follow up with them. If people have other questions, consider trying out the WOVA chat. Um, I'm not sure the degree to which authors will be watching that to answer questions, but um, give that a try. Um, uh, maybe last word, uh, Alex uh, is, is asking um, to that moderation angle, by the way, how many users actively took part in the moderation outside of the expert team? Were people happy to involve themselves in that way? Not all of them. So several users expressed annoyance at, at, at being having to listen to those those prompts and like every time uh, tagging posts as, as being good or bad. But there were others who were very supportive and people actually started posting uh, policies and good practices around posting new content. So so there were users who were very supportive of the whole idea. So so there, there was a mix. I'm forgetting the exact number of people, but you'll find that in the in, in the paper, paper who were involved. I wonder if there'd be a way to just allow people to turn off the instructions like once you know exactly what the controls are, maybe you could say don't tell me the instructions anymore I know what what I have to do for the different things. Yeah, so the instructions go on for three times for every user in their entire lifetime and after that the instructions are they just go away. Okay, so that was already happening. All right, well, uh, well done everyone that was a really packed session and we managed to get all the presentations in and some good con. Uh, questions and comments at the end, I would encourage everyone to follow up with the authors um, uh, outside of this session. And thank you so much for coming.